Hello friends, welcome back to EduTap. In this session, we are going to discuss the previous year questions of finance that were asked in the phase two of the examination. As you know that the exam is held in three phases, phase one, phase two and phase three, which is nothing but the interview. In the last session, we discussed the finance question that appeared in the phase one of paper two. In this session, we are going to discuss the phase two paper two. So friends, let us proceed ahead. Before moving ahead, I'd like to inform you about the comprehensive SEBI guidebook that has been brought by the unveiled by EduTab. So what is this book all about? See, this book contains the definitive answer to all the questions, persistent questions that are asked regarding SEBI, the all the information such as what is the pattern of the examination? What is the eligibility? How is the recruitment conducted? So friends, uh, because most of the students keep switching from one website to another to gather all the information that is relevant to the SEBI grade examination, in order to save your time and effort, we have come up with the book which comprises of all the definitive answer to all your queries the two good thing about this particular book is friends the book is available free of cost the second question is where is this book available so friends the answer to that question is the link for this book is available in the description box below you can go through that so now let us move ahead with the first question of the day which is phase 2 2022 uh, which had been appeared in phase 2 so which of the following is not a method of quantitative control by the RBI and the options given here are CRR, SLR, MSF, reverse and reverse uh, repo and reverse repo, credit rationing friends. Uh, this is a pretty easy question. The answer here is option E. So friends, qualitative tools of monetary policy. Uh, the answer question here is asking quantitative tools. So I would like to inform you about the quantitative tools. Quantitative tools. What exactly is the quantitative tool? See, quantitative tools are the tools which have a uniform impact on the entire banking sector, like CRR, SLR, MSF, repo rate, and reverse repo rate. So these all uh, tools are part of quantitative uh, tools that are part of the uh, monetary policy fronts. And, and apart from that, these have a uniform impact on the entire banking sector, qualitative as the word itself says, these are, you know, sp very specific to few certain banks. So qualitative tools are direct and specific in nature, whereas, uh, sorry, uh, this is qualitative tool, exactly. Qualitative tools also include persuasion by the central bank in order to make commercial bank discourage or encourage lending, which is done through moral suasion. Qualitative tools include, what are the policy uh, tools include uh, included under the qualitative tool? Selective credit rationing control tools, margin requirement, credit rationing, regulation of consumer credit, and the direct action friends so you can go through the information that is provided here and uh, try and uh, the exercise for you here would be understand in detail what are the different types of the qualitative tools we are not dwelling into that aspect so let us move ahead now recently sebi has launched the mobile app dash with a view to empower investors with knowledge about the securities market again this was a current affairs question which was asked in the phase two of the examination the right answer here is friends option a sarthi so amid the going trend of ongoing trend of stock trading through mobile sebi has launched the mobile app sarthi the mobile app is an yet another initiative of sebi with a view to empowering uh, investors with, uh, with the knowledge about the securities market friends so it has it aims to create awareness ab among the investors ab about the basic concept of securities market kyc process trading and settlement mutual fund so all the other information that is uh, related to stock market the good uh, the one more important vital information is the app is available both in english and hindi it is yet to be uh, unveiled in other uh, regional languages friends now let us move ahead with the next question again a question pertinent to the current affairs where any trade receivables are financed through trade receivable discounting system the concerned trades that is trade receivable discounting system on behalf of the factor shall within a period of dash days from the date of such assignment or satisfaction thereof as the case may be file with the central register the relevant detail friends again uh, looking at a this question this question seems very complex but again this is a current affairs question the answer here is option a that is within 10 days this was with regard to the rbi notification and under the factoring regulation act where it had stated that in respect of trade receivable finance through trades particulars of the assignment of receivable shall be filed with the central registry on behalf of factors by trades concerned within 10 days 
so friends the important information that we draw from this particular question is you need to be thorough with the current affairs whenever you are appearing for any uh, examination so now coming to the next question as per the recommendations of the 15th finance commission which of the following is not one of the four themes mentioned in the devolution of performance based incentives and grants to states option e is options are option a is social sector option b is rural economy option c is power sector reform government and administrative reforms option e is manufacturing reform so friends the answer here is option e manufacturing reform as per the 15th finance commission the performance based incentive and grants to states revolve around four main themes the first is the social sector which uh, focuses on health and education the second is the rural economy which focuses on agriculture and maintenance of rural road the third is the governance and the administrative reform under which it has recommended grants for judiciary statistics and aspirational districts and blocks fourth is performance based incentive system for the power sector which is not linked to grants but provides a very important additional borrowing window to the states so friends you must remember that manufacturing reform is not part of the uh, reform that is uh, based on which the devolution would happen now let us move ahead with the next question which is which of the following statements regarding the interest rate parity is true now go through the option the same goods must sell for the same price across the countries there is no mention of interest rate within this particular option interest rate across countries will eventually be the same okay the third is there is an offsetting relationship between the interest rate differentials and differentials in the forward and spot exchange market there is an offsetting relation provided by the cost and revenues in similar market environment so friends if you look pay close attention there is nothing being talked about interest rate parity and here it is it is a very vague statement that interest rate across countries will eventually be same when what is that the point of eventuality and the th fourth option is there is an offsetting relation ship provided by costs and revenues in similar market environment again this doesn't make sense because interest rate and everything is being talked about here in option c which is even with limited knowledge you could arrive at the answer that is option c friends so what exactly is interest rate parity see theory holds that forward exchange rate forward exchange rate should be equal to spot exchange rate times the interest rate of the home country divided by the interest rate of foreign country so friends this is the interest rate parity you can go through that no, there is nothing much here and the last question that was asked in the uh, sebi grade a finance is which of the following is applicable on dynamic qr code on business to citizen invoices under gst applicable from 1st july 2021 again a question which has been directly picked from the current affairs let us go through the options all taxpayers with an annual turnover of more than rupees 500 crore in any preceding financial year starting from 2017 to 18 compulsory to compulsorily generate a dynamic qr code on their business to citizen invoices an insurer or a banking company or a financial institution including a nbfc again this doesn't okay this is one of the option the option c is goods transport agencies supplying services in relation to transportation of goods by the good road in goods carriage supplying passenger transportation service option is supplying services by way of admission to exhibition of cinematography in films in multiple multiplex screens the right answer here is option a friends this was a uh, news again uh, which was picked up from the current affairs you can go through this particular new, uh, snippet that has been provided here there is nothing much to explain here so that's all we have in this particular session thank you i hope you enjoyed this session